I'm Sharon Squassoni, and I direct the Proliferation Prevention Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. I'm here today with Dr. Tomohiro Tanaguchi, who is a professor with the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Um, he's a nuclear engineer by training and a former uh, Deputy Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency for Nuclear Safety and Security. So welcome. Yes. Thank, you Thank you for talking my with my me today. So um, Dr. Tanaguchi, <laughs> as a long time, not just observer, but participant mm. uh, in uh, the Japanese nuclear enterprise, what do you think are the biggest challenges for Japan right now as it seeks to restart its nuclear energy yes, program? Yes. That's a very basic question, particularly after the Fukushima accident. Yeah. Uh, still the majority of the Japanese public are against the restart up mm -hmm. of the nuclear. And also the, in the universities, uh, I feel that uh, younger people showed a strong interest af right after the accident. But now <laughs> the, such uh, interest is also decaying. Therefore, it's very difficult to attract and maintain uh, kind of uh, best and brightest mm -hmm. in this area. And the industry, of course, without good prospect for the future business, right. uh, losing interest and giving less and less uh, priority to nuclear business. And uh, in that sense, uh, I'd like the government to have more leadership or more explicit uh, policy priority in this area. But actually, in light of the series of elections, mm -hmm. they are also very, co including the prime minister, they are rather cautious to lead this nuclear area as a part of, important part of national security or the future uh, economic and the social development of Japan. Right, so the Abe administration has been supportive of nuclear energy, but it's been a little vague, right, in the basic energy plan and the, yes. the latest strategy Intentionally plan. vague, uh, my, my uh, in interpretation. Be because of public opinion? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I'm convinced that uh, Prime Minister Abe is basically the promoter of the nuclear, and, uh, but at the same time, rather cautious for the moment uh, to be too aggressive or too <laughs> expressive in this. What do you think will change that? I mean, will it be, so, so we've had a new nuclear regulatory authority established and they've set new safety requirements and we have uh, many reactors have completed mm -hmm. their applications for restart. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will all change once you actually get some reactors restarted? Do you think that public confidence will grow or what does it take to change that? The nuclear industry people tend to say that the new regulator, more stringent, uh, more demanding, is uh, dragging their foot. Uh, but uh, in my view, the, the more fundamental issue is uh, the lack of attractiveness, or, uh, lack of uh, the momentum mm -hmm. of the industry to build next generation business and technology. Mm -hmm. And this is also very much the result of the lack of uh, interaction and the collaboration with the United States uh, in as a very strategic issue. You think, so, so you think we're not doing enough collaboration? No. Between Japan and the Particularly the US in different sense, uh, after the shale gas and semi-energy independence, the business interest in nuclear, except the maintaining the current <laughs> operating plant, not very serious mm -hmm. interest. And also, the government with uh, budget saving, DOE in particular showing very limited <laughs> initiative and leadership uh, in this. And I feel that uh, under the current economic situation, 
and uh, business uh, environment for nuclear, the government should play stronger and more visible leading role. And the US, Japan in that context uh, should mm -hmm. collaborate or cooperate much more future looking, forward looking manner. So the situation in the United States right now is very grim for mm -hmm. building new nuclear power plants. As a matter of fact, even some existing ones mm -hmm. are no longer competitive yeah. because we have such cheap shale yeah, gas. Yeah, yeah. That won't last forever, mm. but while it does, mm. I think that um, there's, there's not going to be a big rush to build a lot of nuclear power plants. I think we have five under construction right now. But the real question is looking forward, you know, assuming that Japan uh, gets over this hurdle, that it restarts nuclear reactors, where would you have the U.S. and Japan collaborate? Would that be in fast reactors? Um, you know, the U.S. has some equities in Japan's continued yes, yes. progress. But personally, uh, I do not feel the conventional type of sodium-cooled fast reactor is not the main uh -huh. <laughs> and challenge for the Japan or U.S., but uh, mm -hmm. I really like to see more innovative approach for developing the new technologies or uh, new generation of nuclear technology intrinsically safe and uh, user friendly and uh, of course uh, more economic competitiveness but at least 30 40 years ago in early stages of nuclear development mm -hmm. the economic competitiveness of the nuclear not necessarily very high, even if some optimistic <laughs> prospects are shown uh, by nuclear community. But the key point was, at that time, at least, there was uh, leadership and momentum built as a policy or as a strategy in that sense, mm -hmm. rather than simple business as usual or the favorable market, the mm -hmm. waiting for the any favorable market condition itself is now too passive and yeah. maybe we are getting too late and not to maintain the kind of a critical mass or, mm -hmm. <laughs> or the minimum <laughs> sustainable level of the industry and technology. So you approach nuclear energy basically as a, a strategic interest yes, uh, yes and that's why the government should yeah, be in, in particular two cents the energy security supply security alternative to fossil as well as environmentally uh -huh. clean technology uh -huh. that is one thing uh -huh. but the other important point is the more comprehensive security of developing the complex systemic technology advanced technology not necessarily the military, but in, in the civil area to maintain and enhance the capacity of building, developing, creating advanced complex system itself. On safety and security, the fact that you have voluntary regimes um, well, some of us think that may, may not be enough, mm. right? That states need to be, do more. But you could also apply that perhaps to these fuel cycle decisions because mm. they have repercussions within a region. Because fuel cycle decisions, whether a country decides to enrich uranium or reprocess spent fuel, mm -hmm. um, have security and non-proliferation uh, implications. So the, the question is, could you foresee a future where there's greater collaboration in those kinds of decisions? Understanding that that's tough. Yes, yes. At least, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the collaboration more forward-looking to 
develop, establish the infrastructure is more important than the controlling and policing mm -hmm. the, uh, technology or transfer the use of the sensitive materials. But the, the important thing is that the, for instance, China is already weapon countries and also developing, I was invited to the launching of the first uh, uh, breed reactor two years ago in Beijing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and India is uh, also the developing the uh, first uh, reactor. And uh, Russia is continuing. And all this, the anyway, making progress. Uh, and uh, if the Japan and the US simply abandon this, and uh, get out of the picture and become the outsider and simply criticizing or try to some way remotely control this. I do not feel this is an effective way. So you think we have to be We have in to be either working together or some way leading the technology development and application in a manner, as I said, safer, secure, and a more proliferation resistant and in that sense, transparent manner. Thank you so much. Okay. It's been a pleasure talking Thank to you, you today. <laughs>